Hi, my name is Reed Bailey. This is a video about hypothesis testing with a paired sample t-test, part of the intuitive statistics series where the real aim is helping you know when to use which test, or assuming you've already had a traditional statistics course and been introduced to these in more depth. And the example we're going to use from a home shopping network where they want to see if their super shopper program is effective. So what they've done is they've taken 10 people randomly selected and looked at how much they spent per day. Then they designated these folks as super shoppers and they saw how much they spent after being named super shoppers. So Okay, this is a paired t-test we're set up. It's the same thing. The same 10 people are being measured twice before they were super shoppers and after. Different than independent samples t-test where it's two things that are each just measured once. Um, for instance, men are measured and women are measured. Could be an independent samples t-test or there are even ways to set up this super shopper program as independent samples we'll talk about later. For both of these, uh, your independent variable has two levels and your dependent variable has the interval property of an interval or ratio scale and it's normally distributed. So you've seen graphs like this before. Let's imagine that this red curve is for people after they were designated super shoppers and before is the blue distribution. And it looks like, yeah, you know, afterwards they're spending more. Uh, the real question is, is that difference between the spending after to the spending before statistically significant. So I want you to think about just using terms here, such as the mean value of these distributions and how spread out these distributions are, uh, the spread of the distributions. Is it a wide distribution or a really narrow distribution? What could be a good metric to use to say, yes, the bigger this metric gets, the more likely these that this change that we see is statistically significant. So pause for a second, answer this question. What measure can you construct using the terms below that would be an effective measure of whether the two related sample means are significantly different? Well, you're gonna find this is really similar to an independent samples t-test with the big difference being that the metric we're using is the difference, y1 minus y2. Instead of looking at each of those two distributions, the difference is taken for each subject in the study, and you now have a single distribution of the differences. We wanna see, are those differences equal to zero or not equal to zero with our null and alternative hypotheses? So what about this metric where we're looking at the differences? The bigger the difference, the mean value of the difference gets, that might mean that the more likely that these two things are really different from each other. And on the new denominator is how spread, how wide of a distribution is the difference. The wider it is, the less confident we are that the difference is significant. The narrower it is, the more confident we are that the, that the difference is significant. Totally analogous to a t-test that we've already seen. In particular, it not only analogous to, it is the one sample t-statistic just applied to the differences of our data, in this case, from before to after being a super shopper. So in a stat package, you don't have to take this difference and run a one sample t-test. You certainly can do that. Really what you could just do is take the two columns of data, the before and the after data, tell it to do a pair t-test, and it does this in the background. So here's what we did. We did that in mini tab. And you can see if you were not designated as a super shopper right up here in the top versus if you were designated a super shopper, folks that were designated a super shopper were spending about $5 more than those that weren't. Is this difference statistically relevant? Well, we go to the place as we would for our other t-test to the p-value 
And if 0.05 is what we care about, then yeah, this is smaller than that. We would say that we can reject that these two are the same, which put in plain talk, yeah, we can say these two are different. It's high likelihood that these two indeed are different and that the super shopper program uh, you know, is the only difference between them if we've designed our experiment well. So what would happen though, if we ran an independent samples t-test on this same data, which you could do? Well, we still get the same means down here. The difference though, look at this, p-value, that is not statistically significant at 0 0.05, at 0 0.1, at, at 0.2, at 0.25, it's not statistically significant. So what's going on? And what's happening is with the independent sample t-test, it's comparing vari variabilities. We just saw that. It's the denominator of the term is variabilities. And when we're doing that for an independent samples test, we're not only looking at the variability between not super shopper to super shopper, we're also including the variability between different shoppers. Some of them are only spending about 50 in the high 50s in terms of dollars a day. Others are spending more like $80 a day. So that variability between shoppers is included in the spread measure for an independent samples t-test. And it doesn't isolate just the change from being a super shopper or not. With a paired t-test, you can see where I'm going on this. Because you're taking the differences, you're taking in this case, 57 to 65, $8 change, 82 to 90, another $8 change, you know, 70 to 60 down here, a minus $10 change. You're taking the change, the difference between your data points. The only variability you're incorporating is the variability from being the change from being not a super shopper to being a super shopper. The variability between folks that some are spending in the $80 range, some are spending in the $60 range is isolated away and not part of your test statistic. Therefore, you have a stronger test statistic and the p-value is lower, even though the mean values are the same. Why not always use a paired t-test if it's likely to give us a lower p-value? Well, a big reason is our experiment wasn't designed for it. Okay, well, why not always design your experiment to use a paired t-test? Well, we can talk about that for a second. How could you design this experiment for an independent samples t-test? Could you? Well, you know how it's designed for the paired. We had 10 people who were not designated as super shoppers and we measured how much they spent. And then we measured those same 10 people after being named super shoppers. For an independent samples t-test, we would say, okay, the not designated as a super shopper data is for 10 randomly selected people who are not super shoppers. The designated as super shopper data is for 10 other people who were randomly named super shoppers. So we have 20 people in our study in the independent samples test, each one just measured once. And we have only 10 people in the paired t-test, each one being measured twice. Statistically, the paired t-test is a stronger test. Now for other issues like the design of the experiment, there could be some issues with the paired t-test. What if the first measurement happened in December and the second one happened in February? Probably the heaviest spending month in December around the holidays to one of the lowest spending months in February. For the paired t-test that could happen and you could be introducing another factor, which is time of year into the study. So even though you have a stronger statistical test, your experiment may be collecting data that has other differences included in it. Um, so there are other factors than just whether you have a paired test or independent test and trying to run the stronger test that are relevant when you're designing your experiment. And sometimes an independent sample t-test is the more appropriate, gonna lead to more valid results. So putting this on our table, uh, we're working with interval and ratio dependent variables. We see if we have two paired levels for our independent variable, the same thing being measured twice, we run a paired samples t-test. We still have big assumptions there that the differences are normal, the differences are independent, and in fact that our samples, of course, are paired. So when would you use a paired sample t-test on the following options? Which month of the year has the most transit in terms of ship tonnage through the Panama Canal? 
Did tugboat captains who participated in a training program reduce the average transit time of their ships compared to before the program? Is average salinity of water in Lake Gatun lower than 1.1 part per thousand? Are ships originating in China or Japan carrying, on average, more valuable cargo? Hmm. Well, think about which one of these seems like it has a paired sample. While you're doing that, let's review. We want you to know when to use a paired sample t-test. Critical is that you have two related paired samples, the same thing being measured twice and that your dependent variable is interval or ratio. Also important key assumption is that the differences uh, are normal and they're also independent. All right, going back to our example, you got it right. If you picked B, did the tugboat captains who participated in a training program reduce the average transit time of their ships compared to before the program? You measure the tugboat captains before they participate. You measure them afterwards, and then you run a paired sample t-test to determine if the average transit time of their ships was different than before.